Hi, I'm Sarah. Today I'll be showing you how grading works on CodeHS. So the first thing you'll want to do is go into whichever section you're interested in grading. So once you're at your roster page, if you go into course settings and grading settings, you'll have two options when it comes to grading. You can either grade the assignments yourself or you can automatically award full credit if the student's program passes all of the built-in test cases. If you want that to be the case, you can just keep them set to auto. If you as the teacher want to grade their assignments, you can set it to teacher. So you can do this on the module level. So if you want the entire JavaScript control structures module to be set to teacher graded, you can click that. And as you can see, all of the lessons and all of the activities are now set to teacher graded. You can also go into a module and set an entire lesson to teacher graded, or you can go in and just pick a specific activity that you'd like to be teacher graded. The next page I wanna show you is the review page. This page collects any student questions that they have. In their editor, they're able to directly ask you questions. I'll show you where you can see that in their editor later on, but you can address them here. And on the bottom, you'll see student submissions. So this is where all the submissions that you've chosen that the teacher should grade will appear. And you can grade these using two types of grading. There's grade mode, which I'll open in a new tab, and there's fast grade, which I'll open in a separate tab. Grade mode will open up the student's editor So here you can see exactly what Logan put into his editor. You can run the code that he created. And you can view the assignment that he was working with. Then you can go to the grade tab. And that's where you'll do the grading. So currently it's not graded. You can award him full credit if you think he did a great job and it's correct. You can give him a zero if he didn't do any work or you think he deserves a zero. You can provide feedback. And then if you've given him a specific score yourself, let's say you wanna give him a four out of six. You have two options here. You can either mark it as finalized and the four out of six will go into his grade book and he can't go back and edit it. But if you give him mark needs work, this will give him the option to go back into his editor and fix any of his mistakes, and then resubmit it for your review. So I'll just go ahead and mark this as needs work. And then your next student will come up. So this is Dirk's editor. You can go into his grade section and give him a grade as well. That second part of this is the more tab. If you click conversation, this is where you'll see if Dirk had any questions for you, you'd be able to answer them here. Now if we look at fast grade, this is a pretty cool option as well because it gives you the student code and then it also gives you the solution code that we have within the site. So you can compare them here and then over here you can give a grade based on what you noticed. It's the same options that you had before. So if you wanted to award in full credit here, you could. You also have the option to filter here. You can filter by assignment. So if I only wanted to be grading the short stack assignment, I can type that in and limit it to that. I can filter by section. So if I wanted to move to a different section, I could do that. And then you can filter by status. You can also order the submissions from oldest to newest or newest to oldest, or you could do it by last name alphabetically. And now you'd be able to grade these students as well. Once I give them a grade, I would be able to see the next student come up. You also have the option here to run their code if you press the play button. Looks like their code didn't run. They didn't have any code here. Um, 
you can also look at this description of the activity so you can see if they fulfilled that. And here it will show me how many I have remaining in the filter that I chose. And the last thing I wanna show you is the actual gradebook. So once this loads, the gradebook has a lot of color coding that will be available to you as well as your students. The color coding key is up here. So the first color you'd see is gray. Gray shows that an assignment has not been opened. If it's yellow, that means it has not been submitted. If it's light green, that means it has been submitted, but it has not been graded. So if you look at this make a tower activity, all of these are light green and have no grades. That's because these are activities that we decided would only be teacher graded and we haven't graded them yet. The short stack is what we actually showed you Grading, so when I marked Logan as needs work, this came up as the light pink, which means that it has been reviewed and he can go back and fix that. We also gave Ava a zero, so that's been finalized. All of these dark green colors have been finalized in the gradebook. You have a lot of options when it comes to customizing this page as well. So currently, if you look at the top right, it says module programming with Carol. That's all I'm looking at right now. I can change that to all modules. I can change it to Carol challenges or whichever modules I want to be viewing. You can also filter that by lesson. If you go to edit settings, you're able to edit the maximum available points for each activity. So currently our first Carol program is out of five. If I wanted to change that to out of 10, it will automatically change all of these grades to out of 10. If there's an activity that I don't want to appear in the gradebook, let's say tower and turn right, we did that in class together, it doesn't need to be graded, you can X that out. Students will still be able to see it, but it won't be in their gradebook. Next, we have the configure button. This is just another way for you to customize your gradebook. So currently, all of these are included in your gradebook, from videos to badges. If you did not want videos to show up in the gradebook and you did not want badges to show up in the gradebook, you can uncheck those. That's up to you. For student permissions, you have the option to allow students to see their grade report or you can keep that hidden from them. Late assignments, you'll have the ability to set due dates for each module or each activity. If a student has not completed an assignment by the due date that you've assigned, you can set it so that those students are automatically assigned a zero for that assignment into the gradebook, or you can handle that however you would like. And finally, for grading calculations, you can either have these show up as earned points out of the total graded points, or you can have them as earned points out of the total possible points. And then you can decide whether or not you want that to display as a letter grade. Once that's saved, it will bring me back to my gradebook. And then you'll have the option, if you'd like to export this as an Excel document or CSV, if you'd like to import it into a separate gradebook that you use. So hopefully this gives you a good sense of how to grade on CodeHS. If you have any questions about grading, you can go into your toolbox. We have a knowledge base that provides a ton of support you can either search for specific questions you have, or when it comes to grading, we have a grading and code review section that you can go into, and this will probably answer any of the questions you might have. If it doesn't, we have this blue button at the bottom right. You can click into that. You can start a new conversation, and it will either begin a conversation with myself or one of my team members and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. So I hope you enjoyed this demo on grading and I hope you feel confident in grading your students' work. Thank you.